Okay. Um, so I am basically going through a crossroads in my life. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a major shift in my entire universe in the last 10 months. And essentially, I lost the two most important men in my life in a matter of four days. Mm -hmm. My father and then my husband. Okay. So I'm going through all the emotions of grief and pain and trying to move forward. And for me to find that way to give myself self-love and the strength to move on is where I'm at right now. Okay. Are you ready to move forward? Yes. See, that's not coming up as true. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. right? When you go through major grief, you want to get the grief out before you move forward. Right? So the two biggest mistakes with people after something like that happens is, number one, they stay in the grief, even though it's time to move on. And number two, they think, no, I need to just move on. And so they don't actually process all the grief. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you want to you want to be with the grief with the sadness uh, and and just feel it just let it let it go through your body and until it transmutes and it, it will transmute into a, actually joy because it, it'll be done mm -hmm. um, and so when it comes up like don't think okay it's coming up i've got to push it away it's coming up just sort of be with it and it'll it'll shift and it'll go and and from there you can start moving forward. The other thing is to now start being present, right? Because what happens when we have a loss like that is we keep jumping back in time, um, remembering them, thinking about what happened, thinking if there's anything that could have been done to change it. And these jump backs in time don't keep us present. So that keeps us from creating new things in our lives. So you can still be grateful for them, grateful for the time. You can, you can think about the fond memories and, and still have all this love for them. But when you keep jumping back in time and staying there more than you're staying present, that's when you're causing detriment to your current life. Mm -hmm. so, so actually, first thing that's coming up is, are you willing to destroy the belief that if you move on from this, you no longer love them. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. The other thing that's coming up is, are you allowed to move on from this? I don't feel like I am yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel that there's still work to be done there. Okay. So first of all, who, first person or people or things that pop into your head, who makes the decision that there's still work to be done? I do. Okay, good, that actually came up as true. So what is the work that still needs to be done? I'm not sure. I feel like if I don't grieve properly, go through all the emotions, mm -hmm. it will haunt me later on. Okay. Because it's like a band-aid effect. Yeah. So, and, and that's, that's true. That's what we just talked about. So. But then I had this other part of my mind saying, you got to move, you got to move. There's bills to be paid. There's, you got to sort out your life. You have a child to take care of. There's a mortgage to pay. Okay. You got to start moving. So do you have to do one or the other? No, but I feel that if I start moving that I may lose focus on going through the process of focusing on myself and grieving and having that self-love and being strong enough. 
Okay. So that was a yes. Okay. <laughs> no, but is a yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so are you willing to destroy the belief that you have to choose between moving on and getting over this? Yes. <laughs> because you can do that you can devote time in your day to being present and to moving forward in your life and taking care of the bills and taking care of the kids and you can take some time in the day whenever you feel you need it to let those emotions come up and be with those emotions and let them process, okay. right? You've got 24 hours in the day. There's no way you need to use 24 hours every day just to grieve. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's actually clearing up now. Are you allowed to help? For, uh, are you allowed to help? Are you allowed to ask for help through this? Yes. Okay. Good. There's still something that's sort of sticky there. Are there things you're not allowed to help to ask for help for? Sorry, repeat that again. Are there things I'm not allowed to ask for help for? Yeah. Yeah, I think I feel that way. Yeah. So what are you not allowed to ask for help for? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. I think it's just doing certain things that I'm so independent to start off with. Huh? So if you ask for help, will that, will that stop you from being independent? No, but I think uh, the belief is in my mind that... Yeah. So that was no but, which is a yes. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> so, which is a yes, that there's weakness there. Yeah. So are you willing to destroy the belief that asking for help makes you weak? Yes. <laughs> Oh, wow. And are you willing to destroy the belief that when you ask for help, it means you are no longer independent? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. How's that feel? Better, worse, the same, or different? Feels good. Okay. Good. Hey, this is Shiraz. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And you can check out upcoming events at www.energeticmagic.com. And remember, be well, be aware, and be magical.